Hey everybody, it's John and I have something today that I think is going to cause a little bit of controversy. But the more I'm thinking about that, I just got home not too long ago from teaching our final class of the year. We were in Frisco, Texas at the Frisco Gun Club teaching our, you know, cover your ASP uh, essential skills, um, <clears throat> a live fire class. And the more that I stand on the line with students, I'm just going to say this and, and, and posit it as a theory. And I'm not as an absolute fact. But as a theory, I think for the vast majority of people, and especially new shooters, I'm going to say something that is controversial here, and that is that appendix carry in an appendix rig like this particular one from, uh, this is a, a keeper from Spencer Keepers, Keepers Concealment, is not only better, but safer than strong side options for a new concealed carrier. So let's talk about it. Today's video is made possible thanks to the generous sponsorship of companies like LuckyGunner.com. Please head to LuckyGunner.com and thank them for being a sponsor of Active Self Protection. So these three holsters are all built for the HK VP9. You guys know that uh, my VP9 with an RMR, John Talbot, has been my uh, everyday carry gun for some time. So I'm going to do something a little bit goofy here, and I'm actually going to put all three of these on. Because what we have here is we have an appendix holster, a very high quality appendix holster. Uh, we have uh, from, uh, this is from Spencer Keeper, Keeper's Concealment. This is a high quality outside the waistband strong side holster from KSG Armory. This is my very favorite leather holster, an inside the waistband holster from Milt Sparks. Um, so I'm going to put all of them on, and then I am going to then give you five reasons that I think, and I'm going to show you what I see on the line all the time, why I think appendix carry is actually better, especially for new shooters, but for everyone. All right, so I'm going to do something that you'd never do, and I'm going to actually put all of these on. Now, you might wonder why I have a weak side uh, holster for my VP9. Well, we use these in classes all the time, and most people are right-handed, and so uh, we bring holsters along for them, and Gabe at the Armory very kindly provided those for us for our students that are training on the line. If they need to use one of my VP9s, they can have a good holster for it. I'm very grateful to Gabe for that. Okay, I got them all three on, and you can see we are maybe straining uh, credulity here a little bit because obviously we'd never wear three holsters, but I just want to be able to show you all of them kind of, uh, you know, one after the next. Now, this particular gun is not my everyday carry HK VP9. Um, I do love the VP9. I think it's a great gun. HK is uh, one of our sponsors, and I'm a brand ambassador. I've been carrying a VP9 a lot longer than that, though. Um, and and it, I can show you each one of them. So you guys see me do appendix all the time here, and you're gonna see me, I can go into the holster there with that one. Um, we can come out of that. I come over here to this Milt Sparks that is very strong side, much strong side right now. Uh, and in she goes to that. I can come over here and have to switch hands, do that safely, and then come over here to Gabe's, and it all goes in there. So you can see here now, I'm wearing, you know, this is uh, this shirt from San Diego County Gun Owners. They gave me as an extra large, I'm, I'm still uh, transitioning weight and heading down. So it's a little bit big for me right now, but you can see I'm not, you know, I don't look like I'm wearing a sack or whatever, and it conceals just fine here, you know? I mean, I don't really have a whole lot that's sticking out here. That's fine, okay? If I go over here to this side, gun conceals okay over here too, right? Strong side, we can do okay. Now this one's at three o'clock. Push this one back just a little bit to about four, you know, or this is nine o'clock, obviously, geez, John. <laughs> Uh, this one over here, I push back to about four. I come up here as well, pull that out there, put that in appendix, and now disappears as well appendix. So we can conceal the gun just fine in any way that we go. So that's not really the big issue. But let's talk about five ways that the, the appendix carry position, particularly for a new shooter, is actually, I think, a safer and better choice. Now, first of all, I, I, I've kind of been of the mindset that appendix carry is... Uh, for more advanced shooters because they've been taught how to do some things safely. But you know, um, you got to get taught how to do things safely regardless. And so if you can get taught safely how to do things from the beginning, I think you're actually in a better place. And then therefore, you know, you never have the bad habits. So what we see students do on the line, and I, and I see this with students that have had no formal training, one or two classes. I've seen it with students with dozens of classes. That whether strong side or appendix, if they're not shown how to safely holster a firearm, they make significant mistakes. 
So the first thing that I think makes life easier for an appendix carry person is when they go to reholster the gun. Pull a gun up here and they got it in hand. Again, this gun's been checked and, and all that stuff. We're still going to do smart things with it. Is that what happens is it's be easier to see. One of the things that, that I think is a tenet of concealed carry. So I'm not talking about a duty carry rig here. I'm not talking about an officer with an offset holster and outside the waistband and a duty belt where I can kind of fish into it and it's safe to do so. I'm talking here about concealed carry. So we either have, you know, an inside the waistband holster here, strong side inside the waistband here, even outside the waistband. It's sucked up tight against the body in order to hide it under a cover garment. And when we do that, here I am left-handed, it's easier for me to see my way into the holster. We always say you have to look and visually clear your holster. You see here, John still has some tactical shelf, right? So I'm working on it, don't give me too much crap. But I can pull that aside and see it. But one of the things that I see a lot of on, on uh, strong side is people come over here and then they have a time, a difficult time, if they have any tactical shelf, because I've cleared my cover garment. Now I gotta get back over here and clear that. And that's difficult for people, doubly so. If we come over here and what a lot of people do, they carry behind the hip. Now I gotta look all the way over and can I see that? Now I can right now, but I see a lot of people that can't. And so it, it's difficult for them, whether they got a stiff neck, whether they can't, they don't have the kind of uh, spine flexibility to get over here and look and see it and keep this gun pointed in a safe direction or whatever, it's more difficult. When the gun is right here in front, my body is built for this. Almost everybody has the ability to do that. Now, of course, if you're very large in the front, if you are enhanced, you know, you have a significant tactical shelf, that might be a challenge for you. But almost all of us, whether if that's the case, what they I see them do is the waistband comes up, right? Right now, some of us have a Dunlap instead. That's going to be a problem for every position of carry. But here, here's what I can do. I can look and see, and it is very easy for me to visually clear my holster. That's a big advantage, particularly for a new shooter, because a new shooter, a new carrier, needs doubly to visually verify that their holster is clear. The second thing that I think is an advantage is that this position up front here provides better ability to fight someone off who is going for your gun. That if I have a security problem and somebody is trying to take a firearm away from me, I have a harder time fighting them off to the side here if they're trying to go for my gun than if it's up in the front. You see, I'm built to fight right in front of me. I'm built to, to use my hands and my legs and my feet to defend myself in this kind of space, and that includes right here. Therefore, that's easier for me to do. Now, of course, somebody's going to say, well, John, if they have a, um, you know, a strong side holster like this, well, then you can turn that strong side away. And that's not untrue, but now I've bladed myself. And anybody in the grappling arts can tell you, if they're close to you and they're trying to grab for your gun, we're in a grappling environment. And if I turn my hips away from somebody who is grappling with me, they are going to dump me on my butt and we are on the ground. It's not something that I really want to do. If you want to defend against a takedown, one of the first things that we have to do is we have to maintain positional dominance that means squaring my hips up on somebody now all this stuff you got to learn of course on the map and and work and all those things but i can do that here with appendix because i'm going to square up and keep my hips square to them and be able to defend this from the grab much more easily now of course I don't think many beginning shooters are really thinking along those lines, but I do think that it's a significant advantage. Now, the fact that I can look my gun into the holster gives me some other advantages and I think makes it easier to safely holster a firearm. This is the big gripe that people have about appendix carry. You're pulling the gun and you're done. Uh, no, I'm not pointing anything right now. A holstered firearm is not pointed. A holstered firearm is holstered. Of course, a proper holster has to meet all three of the criteria for an acceptable holster. We'll put a card up there so you can see that put a link in the description the three qualities of an acceptable holster has to cover the trigger guard completely has to hold the firearm securely has to allow access to the firearm reliably those are the three things every holster has to do in particular here trigger guard has to be completely covered at all times if the trigger guard is completely covered gun can't go off Therefore, we're gonna not have that. Now, I know there's gonna be that one guy who's gonna post the video clip of somebody who had a, a Pedix carried firearm who, who somehow, with a gun in the holster, had the gun go off. That has to be, I, I haven't seen additional information on that, has to be a modified gun or an unsafe gun or something stuffed into the holster while the gun was uh, being holstered and then you know moving around from there. That wasn't a safely holstered firearm in any way. Can't blame the carry position on that. Could happen in any position. I think also an incredible fluke, which is why it made the rounds on the intertube. However, I think it is a easier to safely holster 
with an appendix carry gun, and I'll show you why. So for this, I'm actually gonna use a CERT trainer, okay? And um, uh, the guys at Next Level Training, Mike Hughes and his crew, uh, are friends, and, and I, I really appreciate the CERT pistol. CERT pistol is a great training tool. Uh, again, this is not a live gun, slide doesn't go, you know, it's just a training tool, right? It's solid plastic, shoots a laser beam. So if I were to show you this here, you can see, yeah, you see the laser beam come out there when I get on the trigger, and then I get a second laser beam in green when the shot breaks. So that's pretty cool. Um, and what I'm gonna do with that is show you something that I would never do in uh, a real gun, which is I am going to actually put my finger on the trigger to activate that red laser beam, okay? And what that's gonna do is show you where the gun goes. Now, if I'm over here strong side, see what I see happen all the time is over here on this strong side, I see people, see the, see where the laser beam is on my stuff there, on my, my pants? And what I see people doing all the time is they start fishing. So they come around here and they do like this, and as they go into the holster, you can see that laser beam muzzling me. Now, if I go sideways, it's easy to see. I've exaggerated a little bit here. I don't normally see that, but think about where that bullet is going. That bullet is going right down my leg. Now, that's bad, right? Now, I could put that gun, this is kind of cool, because this gun actually kind of sort of fits in these holsters pretty well. And you can see that there. See it over here on the uh, on strong side outside the waistband too, is again, if I do something I'd never do, which is put a finger in the trigger so you can see the laser beam, is it goes over this way as they're fishing. Now, part of this is the fact that people don't look their gun into the holster. And so what they're doing is they're, they're fishing and because they're fishing, so they, they, they're like this, and, and they're, they're trying to find their way into the holster. A lot of times, again, that goes back to they can't come over here and look. If they are smart, they come over here and look, then they can usually put it away pretty quickly. But again, if they're not, and they're fishing, look at, look at my leg as I'm fishing. I'm, I'm, I'm putting my leg at risk. Now, of course, you know, as long as you got your finger completely off the trigger and high on the slide and you've cleared visually your holster, then you shouldn't have a problem with that because, of course, the gun's not going to go off because the trigger isn't actuated. But it's still pointing a gun unsafely. We can do that as well here, but because I can see it easier, because I can look and see it so much easier, very seldom that I have a problem. Now, of course, you can not look and just try to put a gun away like that. Do the same thing. But now watch this fact here. So if, I, if I'm if i dumb enough to do this, I just have a feeling, and, and from what I've seen on the line again and again and again, people are less likely to do this. They are less likely to kind of point the gun at themselves in their belly. I think we're just kind of built to go, hey, that's stupid. Uh, the, our proprioceptive index says, that this is the dangerous end, don't point that at yourself. And so we tend to stay outside. Now, I really like that and I want that to stay that way. And of course, this is oriented straight down. And so I can put the gun in there without any problems. It's easier for a rookie to remember that. Another part of that is that when we go for the holstering position, we did all the pew pew we need to do. We just go pew 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 pew, we're doing our stuff, we're having fun, you know, we're shooting, we're doing our drills, whatever. Now it's time to holster. So what I see all the time is I see people that get a nice wide stance, whether they're weaver, you know, if they're, they're weavered up or whatever, most of us are taught a modern ISO and they do this thing and then they come back here. Now watch again, I'm gonna show you with the laser beam here is I'm gonna come back to my holster. I'm just gonna come straight back to my holster as people do. Look at, look at what's happening. I'm muzzling myself right through my leg with the gun to go back to the holster. Now, if I show you that from this side, again, because my leg is kicked out and everybody does this, they come back this way. It happens literally all the time. Now, of course, the way to solve that is it's very simple that I just pull this leg in, okay? So I have to pull that strong side leg in. If I do that and I'm smart about it, then I don't muzzle myself with the gun. That's something that should be taught, but I see people get lazy all the time. Less so when the, what is uh, gonna be muzzled is my bits and pieces, right? I don't, I really don't want to muzzle this. And so I also stop here before I do that because I'm not crossing anything this other way. That said, I do teach people to step back with their dominant leg to give a little bit more relief and a little less chance of muzzling your feet. I don't want to muzzle my feet. So whereas strong side carriers, I teach to step in, appendix carriers actually teach to step out and just a little bit back, kick the hips forward to give me a little bit more clearance. So that's the third reason, right? Is that it's easier to get into the holster safely without muzzling yourself. 
and without getting yourself into trouble. Now, I think part of that is the fourth reason is that not everybody is young and strong and fit. So the fact that not everybody is, and again, these strong side positions, when I'm going to put a gun away, strong side takes this, watch just my shoulder to get the gun back in here. And I'm going to look, look at how far back my shoulder has to go. And when you're young and fit and all those things, and, you know, you're a meat eating crime fighter and all that stuff, that's no big deal. But I'm going to tell you, there's plenty of people that I know, they have a hard time getting that much clearance with their shoulder, getting their shoulder back and up that high becomes difficult. Some of us who've dealt with, you know, uh, rotator cuff problems or you've dealt with scapula problems and those kind of things, getting way back there, very difficult. Staying up here in front of yourself, significantly easier. This is, uh, you know, keeping your elbows tucked to your side. This is very strong and very easy for us to do. Even over here, again, I may not have gone back as far because it's not at a four o'clock, but even at three o'clock, you can see my shoulder is back a long ways and that's difficult for some people, and especially if I have to also look over and see it, which is what we want you to do in holstering. So therefore, I think safe holstering, particularly for people with mobility problems in their shoulders, in their neck, which, which gives them a hard time seeing overall, it's actually safer to come to appendix. Next thing is trigger finger. Now, I'm left-handed here, but here's the thing. Here, watch this now. Your trigger finger is incredibly important, right? Obviously, most important thing. Our, our safe firearms handling rules always keep firearms pointed in a safe direction is number one. Number two, always keep my finger off the trigger until I've made the decision to fire. Now, of course, I need to verify that every time. But when I go to reholster strong side, what happens here is, is that the gun itself will keep me from seeing that. When I go away like this, go, go verify this yourself. You have a very hard time seeing your trigger finger if it's not really high and up, way up tall. Where a lot of people do is, you know, on the, the frame like this, when you do that, I have lost view of my finger. I can't see my finger right now. So when I go to put this gun away, I am not seeing the fact that my finger is off the trigger, which can, especially in rookie shooters, lead me onto the trigger to have problems. Appendix carry, on the other hand. When I come back to the holster, the gun is not pointed this way. It's actually turned so that I have to see my finger. You see this? So I do like a thumb over reholster for appendix carry. I generally uh, I teach that because I think it's easier. But even with a, a full firing grip, that finger is easy to see. So I teach look and verify. Clear the holster and verify your trigger finger and watch that trigger finger all the way back. So I can actually verify my trigger finger much more easily, appendix carry, because it's always outside where I can see it, than I can when it is not, when it's strong side over like this. Now, I, saw, I know some instructors who say, yeah, but John, if I'm the instructor and I'm standing behind them, then I can't see that. Well, that's true. And so for a rookie, I'm always going to be very careful with them. And whether it's me or they have a coach or they have an RSO that's standing with them, all you got to do is, is just get close enough to see over their shoulder because now you're going to verify. Boink. And I can see over their shoulder that their trigger finger is high and along the slide. And I say, look and verify. Okay, look and verify. Holster is clear. Trigger finger is high high and along the slide. Great, safely holster, watch your trigger finger. Got it and go. And that is much safer in my opinion for the student to be able to be taught to safely holster with their finger high and off the trigger. Last benefit for a rookie concealed carrier. So I think a pittix carry actually is better for not being casually made. You see, when I have a gun over here, I don't really think about that gun too much. And I know this from a guy, I mean, I've carried every day for gosh, almost 13 years now. And so when, uh, when you have a gun that's over here strong side, and, and let's just say somebody comes over and gives you a casual hug, or a buddy comes over and gives you a pat, right? Pat, 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 there comes that gun, or what's going on under your shirt? But literally nobody comes over and goes, hey, pat, 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 nobody is touching you here. And, except for somebody who, I mean, is either patting you down as a police officer or something like that. Nobody is, this is a no-go zone. This is my bathing suit parts, my don't touch me parts. And therefore, having a gun here keeps people off. I'm a hugger, and in church, you know, we, we go with the A zone, right? You always kick your hips back when you hug somebody at church. It's just how we do things. You hug kind of shoulders up. And guess what? That keeps you from being made. That keeps other people from banging on this thing, keeps your gun from whacking on stuff, keeps it from falling off. And if something's going wrong, you have more uh, sensitivity here to feel that in the beginning. Also, I think if you've got a good holster, then this gun gets sucked in nice and tight. You can see I put this down and this holster is gone, man. You, you can't see the fact that I have a firearm on even though I have it and two other holsters on. So I think this is actually easier. Now, I think there are two cons 
uh, two negatives to the appendix carry position that I think need to be addressed. I think number one, it's harder to get going because I can buy a Milt Sparks VM2 like this one. It's a great holster and, and almost anybody is going to make this holster work with almost no fit and futs and problems. Same thing over here. This KSG Armory that's outside the waistband is probably going to work and fit without any problems whatsoever. However, I was talking with John Houtman from Filster and uh, he makes fantastic holsters as well. He's a guy that I trust very much. And he said, you know, something that stood out to me. He said that fitting an appendix carry holster is more like fitting a prosthesis than it is buying a holster because everybody's body's a little different. Everybody's, every person's kind of way of doing things is ever so slightly different. And because of that, it takes more time and you have to have more fitment and you have to have the willingness to go through some more and actually get it fit to your person. So for instance, right now I've settled into carrying in uh, a keeper's concealment keeper. And I really like the way the keeper works for me. And it's got this very particular kind of belt loop that does well for me in the clothes that I like to wear, has a wedge on it that keeps it out from me and all those things. And we could talk about what makes for a great appendix carry holster, but you're going to have to spend time in getting it properly fit. That to me is a negative of appendix carry because it's easier for you to make mistakes. So you need some more professional guidance. But honestly, I think you need professional guidance when you're learning how to conceal carry anyways. And so if that's to be the case, then that takes more work from the local gun store employee, from the companies that make great uh, appendix carry holsters, taking care of customers and helping them find the right thing for their needs. Now, of course, the second part of the con of that is usually that means they're more expensive. You know, you can go to your local gun store and find a off the shelf uh, holster for your firearm for strong side for probably 30, 40 bucks. Um, those are cheap ones, but you know, you can probably find that. Whereas a good Apex carry holster, gosh, man, they can get to be a lot of money. You know, uh, a, a good one from KSG Armory or Filster or Dark Star Gear um, or, uh, you know, JM Custom Kydex, you're looking in the, you know, uh, 60, 80, $90 range. Honestly, Spencer, the Keepers Concealment Keeper is more, it's almost twice as much, about 160 bucks because it's very handmade. Um, and, and that being the case, that's a negative. But again, you're carrying a firearm to protect your person. I actually think this is a good investment to make. Now to the people who say that you're gonna point a gun at your junk uh, every time that you holster, no, you're not. And here's why. This is a KSG Armory uh, holster that Gabe made for me. It's a great holster. It's uh, one of my backups that I have in case somebody else needs something or if I have a problem with my holster. And what it has on it here, watch this, see is this wedge. Now this wedge, is removable so you can get a new one if it because it will break down over time and those kind of things but Gabe uh, made this for me this is a pretty cool holster and what you see here is is what that wedge does is when you put it on it it pushes that that muzzle out so that when I have it here if I back up what that does is instead of the muzzle kind of tilting in it pushes that out pushes the top of the gun in that aids in concealment and also pushes the muzzle away from your bits and pieces so that you're not pointing a gun at yourself when you draw the gun. So if you think appendix carry is something that's right for you, I do wanna just spend a minute and teach you how to safely draw from appendix and how to safely holster appendix. We're not gonna do all the draws, positions, and those kind of things. Seated, you gotta do a couple things. Not gonna get into that today, but a basic standard, uh, you know, uh, standing draw is uh, I get in my ready position, do what I'm going to do. If I want my strong side leg back a little bit, that's fine. But the one thing that I really do with appendix carry as opposed to strong side, when it's strong side, I see people bend over at the waist a little bit to get a little bit more access to the gun. We do just the opposite with appendix carry. We kick our hips forward a little bit. Again, pushes everything out. Make sure that the holster is sitting straight so that it is pointed straight down. I don't want cant in the holster so that it's pointing in bad spots. I want the holster oriented straight down all the time. Kick my hips forward a little bit. Now the gun comes out, never points at anything. I go do my pews. When I go to put the gun away, I take this strong side leg. I get done with my stuff. I step that strong side leg back just a little bit. Clear my cover garment, look, touch my thumb, my strong side thumb to my body, and make sure that it stays there. Now, once I have visually cleared my holster, I tap the outside of my holster. The reason that I do that, if you look over here now, you can see that the muzzle is pointed well away from my body. And because I've kicked my hips forward, that muzzle and the holster is pointed away from my body as well, and it's pointed straight down. Then I come up just far enough to clear the muzzle, keep that muzzle in, actually give it a little bit of torque to move that muzzle out again, 
safely holster and let it go. That's how I safely holster an appendix carried firearm. I have never pointed a gun at myself. I've never pointed a gun at people. Oh, you're gonna shoot yourself in the femoral artery. Can't do that because I haven't pointed it at my femoral artery. I've verified the whole time that my trigger finger is high and along the slide. I've verified everything is safe and good and put the gun away safely. So if you wanna try it, great. Now I'm not telling you you have to carry appendix and I'm not telling you that you shouldn't carry strong side if that works best for you. I don't care, carry the way that works best for you. But I am saying that this fear of appendix carry is an irrational fear. And I transitioned to appendix carry about five years ago, give or take, maybe six. And I, I just think for an everyday carry position, it works and does so much better in so many ways. It's for me and I just think as well, that it's safer and easier to teach the average concealed carrier. So let me know what you think in the comments. If you think I'm an idiot, just tell me I'm an idiot nicely, please. If you disagree, tell me why. Maybe we can do some more testing online. We can do some more testing on video and see if we can answer some of those discussions and all that stuff. As always, hey, Again, if you don't like appendix carry, I'm down with that. If you don't want an appendix carry, that's fine. Um, but let's be respectful in the comments and treat each other with some care here, okay? Have a great day, everybody. God bless.